This is a bit of a departure from my usual videos, but something needs to be said. And that something is that I am not a nice person. Now, why, Jody? Oh, why? Are you not a nice person on the internet? Why aren't you kind to everyone you meet? Why aren't you a really, you know, understanding, you know, just... Why aren't you nice, man? Why can't you be nicer in the comments? Why can't you be nicer? Play, play with kid gloves and blah, blah, blah. The reason is I don't know you people, and I don't care. The truth about the internet is that it's basically the Wild West. Now, granted, all the tech companies are trying to get us to where we have to moderate our comments, we have to make up our own new language to bypass their censorship, they'll ban us if we say certain things, they'll ban us if we call certain people certain things, but the truth is that there is a very solid place for gatekeeping, for bullying, for criticism, for anger. There is a very important role that ousting people plays. It's important to get rid of people who are toxic. And the problem is that toxic people are supported by the current forced polite society that we're currently living in. So in the comments, whenever I rip on people, when they say they're leaving, they're going to unsubscribe. Oh, they, you know, I can't believe that somebody would say this. You're, you're going to run out of subscribers, bro. The reason that I don't care and that I'm mean to them and tell them, go ahead, unsubscribe, get out. You don't have to announce it on the way out. You're all losers. I don't care what you think. Nothing you say matters and so on. The reason I abuse them until they shut up and go away is that those people deserve it. The problem is that the internet today has been set up so that everybody gets played with with kid gloves. It's all soft. It's all safe. But the problem is, this safety is not actual physical safety. No, it's psychological safety. Psychological safety is not my problem. Your psychological safety is your responsibility. It is not mine. It is not everyone else's on the internet. And the problem with this notion of psychological safety being some kind of a thing that internet companies need to enforce and so on and so forth, it really is the extension of the concept of the polite society. Why aren't you polite to people? If you're polite to people, then everybody gets along. Well, the thing is, yeah, okay, everybody gets along as long as they go along. But I don't want to go along. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you consider to be right. I care what I consider to be right. I care what I think. My ideas are better than your ideas until you can prove otherwise. And when you show up and you complain about my presentation, you're not trying to win an ideological argument. You're just trying to bully me. But this is the problem. It's bullying wrapped in a package that has a bunch of smiles on it, now a bunch of kindness on it. If you just scrape just the slightest bit off the surface of these people that enforce this politeness, that enforce this notion that everybody should, that, that communities which don't exist on the internet because a community is like that guy over there, that guy across the street that just moved in, that guy's a part of my community. The internet's not. There are no communities on the internet. Now, I know technically the word community, it, it means just a, a group of people for whatever common reason. I know that that's a definition, but that's not what people think of when they think of a community. When they think of a community, they think of people coming together, spending time together, actual physical presence. People that actually have to deal with each other day to day and get along and work with each other. There is no community on the internet. You are an individual, everyone else is an individual, and even other people in the same so-called community can be vastly different from you. No matter what happens, a community is still built up of individuals, a digital community even more so. And the problem is, there is a movement to erase your individuality and replace it with this group thing. Now the problem is this group thing is wrong. A lot of it is wrong. It doesn't matter which group you're talking about. Pretty much all groups of people are far more stupid and dumb, ignorant, just a failure of intellectual capability than an individual. Because when people get together, the people that win are the people that are the loudest, that are the most violent, that are the most aggressive. They're not the people that actually know what they're doing, the people that are competent. They're the people that win by making everybody else too afraid to put in the potentially dangerous and expensive effort of fighting them.
This is how social justice warriors take over communities on the internet. This is how open source software got fucked by a bunch of lunatic SJWs. And yeah, I know that term at this point feels old hat because now it's evolved into wokeism or leftism. You know, it's, it's so far from just being a bunch of feminist lunatics. Now we have all these trans lunatics and trans has basically become a way to hack all of society because now trans is this God thing that no one's allowed to argue with. So if you show up and you claim to be trans, all of a sudden no one's allowed to touch you. You have supreme authoritarian power over wherever you go because if you say anything, if you do anything, a big old mob of bullies will come. See, the cancel culture never left. It's just morphed into different formats. If you look at open source software today, you can see the reason that I am not nice to people, that I am more than happy to deal with these stupid people with some nice cyberbullying. How is cyberbullying even a real thing? Haha, ha, just turn off your computer and go outside, dude. But this is why these people need to be punched in the face digitally. They win if they are the aggressive ones and you are the meek one. If you live your values, then your values will die. This is what I call the libertarian paradox of tolerance. If you put up with these assholes, then eventually, because they're willing to be brutal and you're not, you back away because your values dictate to do so. They do not back away because their values don't dictate to do so. They win. They win. Why do they win? Because you let them win. Because your values let them win. Libertarianism is the way to go. Meritocracy is the way to go. The problem is there will be no libertarianism and there will definitely be no meritocracy if you allow authoritarian pricks to show up and bully you out. If you just walk away willingly, of course they're going to take over. Of course everything's going to get shit on. You've got people in like Linux and a, you name it. Any big open source project is absolutely infested with ideological, rabid, violent, aggressive, nasty, mean people mostly that claim to be trans, but if they're not, then they're allies or supporters or they're LGBTQIA2+, blah, 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 all these initials and shit that don't matter because all that matters in software is the code. All that matters when you walk into the metal shop is that you can do the welding or the cutting or you can run the beam machine, whatever it is. All that matters when you go to the mechanic shop and you break out those tools is that you know what you're doing that you can crack the right nuts that you can pull and push the parts correctly that you put the oil on the ring of the oil filter before you screw it on so that the damn thing doesn't glue to the block that's all that matters and none of that has anything to do with your penis your vagina your fake penis your fake vagina your complete lack of a vagina for some reason you've got both or at least something that looks kind of like both somehow i guess that changes your genetics to these people but whatever and the truth is that um the definition of a man is y chromosome if you don't have a y chromosome you're a woman that's how genetics work i'm sorry had to throw that quick lesson in there and that's the end of that discussion stop asking what is a woman you morons it's really simple Simple. No Y chromosome, woman. That's how it works. That's biology. Basic biology. Oh my God, so difficult. But these people, these ideological lunatics, are very aggressive and that's why they get their way. They are backed by other people who are also very aggressive and that's why they get their way. Because if you do not bend to them, then they'll bring a mob after you. The problem is, you have to be willing to face that mob and give them this. This is what the mob deserves. This is what the mob deserves. This is how you end cancel culture. This is how you make things stop being so crappy. <clears throat> it really is that simple. You do two things. You don't kowtow to the mob. You just give them the finger and shut up and just hold that finger until they go away. And then on the other side of things, you vote with your wallet. You vote with your time, money, etc. You take your resources and you go somewhere else with them. And you win. That's that's all there is to it. And these people, like, it's all it's it's mostly leftist lunatics. Now, granted, there are plenty of I, I have my hate for right wing lunatics too. Conservative Christians that are really rabid are a major problem too. But they pale in comparison to the leftist lunatics because the leftist lunatics have fucked open source software. They go into projects, 
They insist on adding codes of conduct and rules that make you make it so that they can go in there and then rules lawyer, which is where they interpret the rules as, as their wording instead of as their spirit, so that they can bully the original people out and they replace them and take over the project and then everyone is gatekept from that project if they don't agree with the ideology. Now what spurred this video? What, what is it that made me make this? I was watching a Lewis Rossman video where he's talking to this STR cat person, um, a, the Graphene OS maintainer, I guess. I don't, I didn't look into it. I don't care. Um, the bottom line is Graphene OS is a, a free operating system for mobile Android devices. It's basically a free Android. And this Graphene OS maintainer is psychotic. It clearly social justice bullying lunatic tactics all day long, every day. But the problem is this is everywhere. This is not limited to Graphene OS. And Lewis was nice to the guy, as nice as you could be, and the guy's still crazy. Because the guy's like, you will take down those posts. If you don't take down those posts, then I'm going to publicly expose you. <laughs> okay, bro, whatever. And that's why Lewis made the video. It's like, this guy's threatening to like expose our conversation. So fine, I'll do it first. Because that's the only way that you can win, is to throw it out there first, right? But... These people need to be removed. They need to be out of power. You do not let them in. And if they get in, you need to get them out. And I don't care how you get them out. By as much force as necessary, they must be removed. But you're one person, and this is the problem. You're one person. You don't have that power. You don't have force. You're just one person. So what do you do? Because you look at this. You look at Linux. Linux infested, Linux is infested with these, these trans social justice warrior lunatics that are very aggressive and mean and nasty and violent, and if you threaten their ideological hold on the kernel, they're going to shit all over you. So you can't really do much about that. At, at some point, you have to accept that the project there is too big. You can't do anything about it. But if the software quality is there, you probably can at least use it and deal but not with the smaller stuff. See, with the smaller stuff, you walk away. Because one of the beautiful things about open source software is choice. If you have a distribution full of social justice lunatics and you don't like it, go install something else. Walk away. Don't give them your support. <clears throat> don't file bug reports. Don't help them with packages or anything like that. Don't write any documentation. Don't give them your labor. Don't give them your money. Time and money, those are the two resources that you have in this world, is time and money. Everything extends from that. Your, your labor is your time. Your um, property, your real property, is your money. If you go to some conference for some sh stupid Linux distribution thing that's full of fucking like weird-haired, colored, fat motherfuckers that think they have the wrong genitals or something and claim victimhood if you so much as look in the wrong way in the wrong direction or whatever, if you do that, if you go there, you are supporting that ideology. If everything has that ideology in it, walk away from the things that have the most of it and use the thing that has the least of it and try to get that out of there if you can. But as long as you don't give them your resources, you will murder these fucking assholes through attrition. All wars are wars of attrition. And I am declaring a war of attrition on social justice lunatics that have taken over basically everything in computing at this point is infested with this crap it's not even just computing look at the stupid bud light thing look at the target thing i mean d you see this thing back here you know why this flash gets transformers animation is playing i did that on purpose oh i'm doing that like wojack thing but uh, I did that on purpose because this is the crap that we're up against. <laughs> it's like they, they read some book, realize, oh, I can I can claim to be a victim. I can claim I can use victimhood to bully other people and I can get my way. I can run things. And they do. They do run things. Get away from these people. Make them get away from you. Do not put codes of conduct on your software projects. If you run a friggin' software project, no code of conduct. You know why? Because if you put a code of conduct, you're accepting the ideology, even if it's just implicitly, <clears throat> of the people who put that code of conduct idea out there in the first place. It's these people. And once that code of conduct is in place, someone will inevitably try to come along and pry that shit away from you using your own rules. 
All software projects should be run by a benevolent dictator for life. One person or maybe two people that are absolutely dedicated to the project wholeheartedly, that make all the decisions and that are the final say and no one else has veto power. There are no rules that they have to follow. There's no committee to deal with that can be hijacked and turned into the HOA of software. This crap's got to stop and it doesn't stop until you walk away. Take your resources somewhere else. You don't like Target, right? You don't like the fact that Target's putting stuff in their children's section or whatever with like the, you know, uh, trans child, tuck, tuck, you know, whatever. You don't like that? You don't like that? That's something that you don't like? Well, then stop shopping at Target, right? But that's the problem is that people won't stop shopping at Target. They'll just put up with it. But you could go somewhere that doesn't have that stuff. It's a little bit more work, but the thing is you're taking your resources away from the thing that you don't like. If you can do that, do that. If you don't do that, shut the fuck up. Don't complain. Don't go anywhere and whine about the fact that you didn't do shit to stop the problem, to end the thing that you don't like. You didn't do a damn thing. And then you get on the internet and complain about it. You know how much value complaining on the internet actually has about this fucking much? That's why I'm not nice to people on the fucking internet. Because if they're in my shit complaining, all they're trying to do is get me to just give up some room or whatever to, to basically back away and do what they want. They're bullies. That's the end of it. And so I bully them back. And, I'm, and that's what I'm going to do. I know that this got a little bit away from the central point, but it's all related. This is why I'm not nice. This is why when you see someone show up in my fucking comment section and they want to run their mouth, they want to say something stupid, the first thing I do is go, mmm, bitches, because Guess what? If you don't put up with it, it goes away. If you don't put up with bad people, the bad people go somewhere else and bully someone else and dick with someone else and screw with someone else. If you don't let them have any foothold in your shit, they go away and find somewhere else to be dickheads. And that's why I'm a bully. And that's why I'm mean. And that's why I'm nasty. That's why I'm impolite. That's why I use naughty words. That's why when someone says, why don't you respect my religion and not say Jesus all the time in your videos, I say, I'm not religious. I'm not religious. Go away if you have a problem with it. I'm not religious. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God, God, God. God damn it. Fuck. Oh, I don't want to watch your videos because of your colorful adjectives. Boop, boop. Fuck, fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck. That's all there is to it get rid of them dispose of them and that's what i've done all right I, i'm about tired of watching that for like the 10th time i've got this screen over here look check this out I'm, I'm actually having to watch the the oh you can't see it but you get the idea so i keep seeing that in the corner anyway thanks for watching um help me bully people in the comments take care